Once we had moved through this, what I really felt we needed to end with was looking at the culture of the world, meaning that, that Genesis is really the explanation, just as you're seeing with the engagement, Genesis is really the heart of yes. all culture. And it's both the standard, and it also shows us how far we've moved away from mm -hmm. it. And so uh, interviewing George Grant, it was funny, I really struggled to figure out who do I, who do I interview mm -hmm. this person? Who's gonna finish it up? And I've been in George's church now for, well, I've known George a long time. Uh, he was in our first series 10 years ago, Modern Parables. Um, I've been a big fan of George. And it's funny, that old day of you know, how it can be right in front of your face and you don't see it. And so I heard him he was preaching every Sunday morning and eventually it just hit me. I was like, George he's is the, the guy for this. Um, and of course he was perfect because his, he's a very much of a polymath when it comes to knowledge of history and religion and culture mm -hmm. and you know horticulture and all these areas. And so I felt he was just great. Um, he really summed it up and I felt mm -hmm. like in a way brought it into this world of the engagement. Well, he really did, and he helped us again reconnect with the implications of what happens uh, when we walk away from the history that God has given to us. God didn't give us that history just so we could pass a history test sometime. He gave us that history because it helps us understand who we are and why we're here. Mm -hmm. It helps us make sense and answer the big questions. What's the meaning of life? Uh, what's, what's the purpose right. of everything? And where do I fit into all of this? And God gave us that history to help us understand all of that. And he helps us understand why we live in a world that is so broken, uh, why there is evil and suffering and all of that that goes on around us that we don't understand. Well, when you walk away from that history, then you lose all of that and that context and, and who we are. So he helped bring us back again mm -hmm. to, uh, I guess we would call biblical theology, to help us understand uh, the purpose of, of life, the purpose of man, and the role that we play in our relationship to one another, to the creation around us, and to God. And so that's the, that's the essence of what George was doing for us. He was saying, step back again and look at this meta-narrative of God and look at the picture and where we fit into that. Uh, and of course, that's uh, what we're going to do in, the, in the, the engagement. In fact, I'm even going to propose <laughs> that there is another epic uh, within the standard, um, the standard paradigm yeah. of looking at, uh, at a worldview, creation, fall, redemption, and restoration, that we live in uh, the epic of engagement, and that is what God has called us uh, to do. But George brought us back again to help us understand the importance of that history uh, in terms of the meaning of life. Well, and I think that that's the thing, is that what I wanted to do, and I don't know how well as it came out as much as it did, it did in the full interview, was that the conventional paradigm, the evolutionary view of the world of progress, of long periods of time, of death, that is the foundation of our modern culture. So in a sense, it's a pyramid that sits upon this very strong mm -hmm. steel post mm -hmm. that, is of, that is the evolutionary worldview. I mean, it's mixing metaphors here because it's a long period they're, they're putting it into. But issues of marriage and sexuality, of transgenderism, and all these ideas of life and uh, the environment, all of this goes back to our view of Genesis. And that I was talking with somebody at one point and discussing this thing, these, these issues, and he doesn't, didn't hold Genesis as history, but as he listened to it, he said, you know, if Genesis really is history, that changes everything. And I think that's what's so vital for Christians, that looking at a world that seems to be falling apart, and this isn't the first time a world has seemed to fall apart, but that the only hope this world has is going back to the scripture in Genesis. And that until it does so, it is forced, as George said, into moral relativism. That Anything is possible. Any yes. kind of, uh, of moral idea is uh, plausible. Right. And we'll start to jimmy with uh, our sexuality mm -hmm. and we'll mess around with our environment thinking that we've become it. And until Genesis is in many ways, it's the palliative, it is the plumb line, it is mm -hmm. the medicine that yeah. will fix our society. Because um, even as someone that may say, well, you know, a society that even it doesn't even recognize Christ, ultimately, and I don't want to be a Christian, but if they, many societies can at least recognize, well, maybe Genesis is true, which has happened in many cases in the past uh, in our America, that they might, we're all Christians, but recognize that, well, that, that Genesis count made a lot of sense and we base things on it. That is the future mm -hmm. for a healthy yes. society, is knowing how God started everything. It really is. So th this, the roots of a biblical worldview are found in those first 11 chapters. Yes. If, if you uh, 
wipe those out or smudge them or twist them into another form, you're messing with the very foundation of a biblical worldview. But it's, it's more than that. It's the foundation for culture. It's the foundation for society. It's, it's a foundation for who we are. And so when you take away that foundation, then what happens, uh, and this is what George is pointing out, what happens is we all end up being uh, corks, bobbing on a, an ocean with no mm -hmm. shore. And, and Miley Cyrus, who is gender, she said, I'm gender fluid. Right. Which really, in essence, means she's floating. She, uh, and I feel sorry for that. Uh, she thinks it brings her freedom. It does not. Uh, it puts her into a bondage where uh, she's floating on an ocean with no shore. And that is what happens to our whole culture. Uh, we lose the foundation for marriage, uh, it, which will destroy the family. We lose the foundation for male and female. Uh, we lose the foundation for what it means for us to be uh, ordered and gathered together in communities and in nations and states. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's critical, and that's, that's why we say that nothing makes sense except in the light of Genesis. No, you're right, and so I, I guess that's a good place to end is that. So that quote comes, of course, for those who, many people watching this knows that, that's, uh, I think it was Theodore Dobzhansky, the famous Russian immigrant to the United States and was a great biologist, an gen evolutionary geneticist, and he used to say nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. And um, there's an interesting story, supposedly, that Leonard Brand told me about him. He said that Dobzhansky was teaching an old man down in uh, Central America and um, uh, Dr. Brand's an Adventist, so he was at an Adventist school, Dobzhansky was, and he went out with, I remember the middle of his lectures, uh, which is curious, I don't know how what all the story is, how who, who, I think he was, must not have been at the Adventist school teaching, but there were some Adventists who went to a local college where, and heard him, so that's how the, the, the story was, came back to Leonard. And he said he walked out, was kind of taking some students out, and went out and picked a flower and said, there's a lot of design here. And one of the ladies was like, what are you talking about? You know, you're one of the most famous evolutionary geneticists. And he was looking at some, um, the bees and said, this is just incredible design. He said, look, he said, uh, I'm not going to be able to change. He said, but you, you can. And you need to be, and, I'm, and again, I'm, I'm not, probably not a perfect paraphrase of the story, but it, it was a stunning admission uh, by Dobzhansky that this world is designed and that really, when you start applying evolutionary thought to the world, it begins to fall apart. Yeah. Death happens, doesn't make sense, things don't really work. And in a long period of progress versus a short period of fiat creation, yeah. of design. And I think that's really the heart of this, is that when you come back to everything, you realize that, well, Genesis is really the, it's the, uh, the lodestone, it's the key that unlocks all of things for meaning. And without it, Nothing really has meaning to me.